Our hearts are filled with gratitude today as we celebrate Jesus together. Let the significance of this season, let it sink in deeply, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we praise you. Jesus, we worship you. Thank you that you came to earth, and thank you that you're coming again. And God, we not only sing about you, and we not only learn about you, but we are so grateful that we know you in this relationship. Thank you for your promises, your faithfulness, your goodness. Thank you, God, how you bring healing. We pray for every heart that's grieving or broken today, that you would bring hope and healing. And Father, strengthen us in our weakness, that we might be faithful to what you've called us to do. And we pray for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. There is one glorious truth I want us to focus on today, and it's this. No one loves you like Jesus. No one loves you like Jesus. Turn to the person next to you and let them know no one loves you like Jesus. And now turn the other direction, even if you don't know that person, and tell them no one loves you like Jesus. Now you're preaching. Now you're preaching. We say that, we believe that, but how do we really know that? We desire that in the deepest part of our being. How do we know that no one loves us like Jesus? Three reasons today. The first is that Jesus came down with compassion. Jesus came down from heaven with compassion. In John chapter one, and I encourage you to read the entire chapter today. John chapter one, starting in verse one, we read in the scripture In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus is God. Jesus is eternal. Jesus is the Word. Jesus has always enjoyed fellowship and oneness with the Father. We worship one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus is the creator of all. Jesus was not created at some point. People get theologically confused. They think because about 2,000 years ago he became human, he must have been created. Jesus was not created. He's our creator. And yes, he became human, fully God and fully human, but he's always existed. Everything we see is created by Jesus. Jesus is God. Jesus is revelation. We know God, and it's all through Jesus. We worship the Lord. It's important to have good, sound theology in Christmas time, and we know who we're praising. Jesus made a choice. Love is a choice, and Jesus chose to leave heaven. We call this the incarnation. John describes it, John chapter one, and continuing in this chapter, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son, who came from the father, full of grace In truth, the incarnation, God is with us. God in a human body. Jesus, fully God and fully human. Jesus is the light of the world. And as John describes it, he tells the whole story in these words. The light of the world has come. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness tries to resist the light, but the light has overcome the dark. That's what we're celebrating today. The light of the world comes into the world. Darkness tries to resist, but the light of the world, Jesus, has overcome even this world, darkness, death, and the devil. That's who we praise. That's our Jesus. That's our Savior, full of holiness and hope, friend of sinners, and yet never sinned. Tempted like we are, never sinned. Sinless, yet close to us, with us, full of hope. A hope greater than all of our challenges combined. If you put all of our challenges together, Jesus' hope is far greater and far deeper than anything we'll ever grieve or mourn. 
Life is about relationships. Life is about love. Life is about compassion, and Jesus came with compassion. What is compassion? Compassion is that look in your dog's eye when you walk through the door. You know what I'm talking about? When I come home and Bella comes running out to greet me and I look at Bella in the eyes, Bella understands compassion. Even if I just saw her five minutes ago, the level of compassion doesn't change. Dogs understand compassion. But what about us? Do we understand compassion? Sometimes it's difficult to love people. Even people we love is difficult to love with consistent compassion. God will help us. God is teaching us. Friends, strangers, do you have compassion for people that disagree with you? Look different than you? Vote differently than you? Do you have compassion for people that speak a different language or come from a different country than you? God will help us to have his compassion to love all people the way Jesus loves Compassion is at the core of every healthy relationship. Compassion with our family. Compassion in marriage is key. I remember when Lori and I were dating and she lived in Northwest Iowa and I was in Southeast Iowa. It felt like we were continents apart. You ever tried that long distance relationship thing? I don't recommend it. But there came a day where Lori left her job in Northwest Iowa working at a camp and she traveled, she came down to Southeast Iowa where I was working. Lori moved down. I can see it brought me a lot more joy than it brought you. I I was a little more excited than you look. Lori moved down. And yes, that led to our marriage, this union. Jesus came down with compassion. Jesus moved down. Jesus moved down from, wouldn't it be difficult to leave heaven? Wouldn't you think twice to step out of that glory, to come down to the strife and the violence and everything that entails our world? Jesus moved down for over 30 years with great purpose and great passion. Did he have a palace? Did he have lots of degrees? No, he came down homeless. He came down not to be served, but to serve. Who is this humble king starting in the manger? Faithful, humble, coming with compassion. Our most important relationship is with Jesus. We didn't start it. His kindness and compassion move our hearts. They lead us to repentance. We discover the compassion of Christ and we receive it and we are changed and we're in his family forever. How do you describe such awe and wonder of the Savior. How do you describe the birth of Jesus? Here's a couple of quotes that give us perspective. It's important to have a sense of real wonder with God. The hinge of history is on the door of a Bethlehem stable, a stinky stable. How would you describe the smell of the stable? The history of the world hinged on the door of that stable. How else do we describe Christ's birth? Augustine said he was created of a mother whom he created. He was carried by hands that he formed. He cried in the manger in wordless infancy. He the word without whom all human eloquence is mute. This is our savior. Then we also hear from C.S. Lewis, once in our world, a stable had something in it that was bigger than our whole world. In this world, this baby was bigger than our whole world. In this stable, this baby is bigger than our whole world. Jesus is our creator, but he stepped into our world with compassion. What is the compassion of Christ? Here's three elements. First, he gave up his privilege, convenience in what was comfortable. Then second, he came to where people are our world, where we exist. And then also, he relates, he builds relationships with compassion, he connects and loves deeply. What's the calling on your life? If you're a follower of Jesus, and you would say he's your savior, you wanna imitate him, become like him, you know what that's gonna include? Compassion. It's gonna include these three things. Let's not miss it. Give up privilege and convenience and what's comfortable and go to people and build relationships and serve them and then love them. Go to where they are, connect deeply. 
love them with the love of Christ. That's our calling. That's how we want to live. Why do we want to live that way? Because no one loves us more than Jesus. Why have that compassion? Because no one loves us more than Jesus. Jesus is our why. He is the reason. And it leads to the second aspect. Jesus came near with commitment. Jesus comes near with commitment. Jesus is pursuing you. I remember when a woman, a young lady, showed up at church, and it was during the week, and she said, what is this? It's like this knocking. It's like Jesus. I wake up in the morning, it's there. I'm going, trying to go to bed at night, it's there. During the day, it's there. It's like this knocking, it's Jesus, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. She just showed up and said, what do I do? Came to church, said, what do I do? I said, have you decided to follow Jesus? She said, no, I've never made that decision. I said, well, this is Jesus knocking at the door of your heart. Do you ever sense that? Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Is your heart hard and guarded and full of pride? Or do you say, come in, Lord Jesus? And she decided in that moment, I'm gonna say yes to Jesus. The best decision of her life, the best decision of our lives is when we start that relationship and say yes to the one who already loves us and pursues us. He's relentless because he brings commitment and he brings a love we can't find anywhere else. There's only one who knows you completely, including all your fears, your dreams, your mistakes, your idiosyncrasies. There's only one who knows you completely and loves you perfectly. There's only one. That's a powerful thing. God knows everything about you and loves you exactly as you are today. Not three years down the road, if you get cleaned up a little bit, if you get your act together, if you do a few more things better, not that version, right here, right now, sitting down in that chair. God's the only one who knows you, loves you perfectly, and it's true for all of us. When you think about the birth of Christ, what a scene. We have Mary, maybe a teenager. We have Joseph. Their world has been rocked. They're trying to figure things out. You think about the others, shepherds, angels. Shepherds represent everyday people. And then who's coming from the east? Astrologers, magi. Why is that important? Bible scholars look at this crowd and say, that's a motley crew right there. That's exactly who God loves. He loves such a range of people in this room. We have people of all different generations, ages, personalities, cultures, nations, languages, together in one room. What brings us together? The love of God. And because of God's love, we love each other. In heaven, it's going to be people from every nation, tribe, and tongue. In heaven, that's what it's going to be. So let's get used to a motley crew. Let's celebrate that God loves all people and this diversity in God's family. <laughs> Nearness and commitment is a powerful combination. Who loves you with commitment and consistent nearness? Tim Keller says it this way, you are a far worse sinner than you ever imagined as compared to God's holiness. We are. And yet, we are more loved, you are more loved than you ever dared hope or dream. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us and his grace is greater than our rebellion. This is the gospel. Jesus brings the highest level of commitment and this commitment includes sacrifice. Now, I've married a lot of couples, and it's a glorious day. There's not many days better than when you're married in that wedding ceremony. And different ceremonies have different emphasis, styles. Some ceremonies, they have a unity candle. Some don't. Some have a lot of singing. Some don't. Sometimes the groom might walk the family to start the service right in front Sometimes it doesn't happen. There's a lot of things that vary, but there's one consistent in every time I've led a wedding. You know what it is? Right here, it's the ring. It's the ring. Now, every time there's a commitment, there's a covenant, there's a ring. Why the ring? Because the ring represents commitment. And love includes commitment. The love of Jesus includes commitment. 
Now, commitment makes the celebration. If there wasn't much commitment, there wouldn't be much to celebrate. Can you imagine on the wedding day if the couple looked at each other and said, we'll try to stay together. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. If our conflict isn't too bad, if you stay healthy, if we have enough money, maybe a couple more years for the kids, I guess. Can you imagine what the celebration would be if those were the vows, if that was the commitment? Like, well, I don't know. Typically, it doesn't last too long. Maybe we'll be a few more years on average. Let's just see how it plays out. If that was the commitment, would there be a celebration? Would there be a big cake? Would there be a bunch of dancing? No, the commitment is the key. The commitment is the key. There's no greater commitment to you than the commitment Jesus brings. We are the bride of Christ. Jesus keeps every promise. Jesus is faithful. Jesus keeps his word. No one can separate you from the love of Christ. Not even hardship, sickness, demons, nothing in this world can separate you from the love of Christ. God was always with you. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God will never leave you or forsake you. That's a powerful commitment. The love of Jesus is more about faithfulness than feelings. It's more about action than talk. It's more about service than lip service. It's more about devotion than emotion. It's more about covenant than convenience. And it's more about commitment than intentions. Sacrificial love is the greatest love. If someone asks you, what's the greatest love? The greatest love is sacrificial love. Sacrificing by leaving heaven, sacrificing by being born in a manger, sacrificing as he and his family fled to Egypt with death threats, sacrificing as he washed feet, sacrificing as everywhere he goes, he shows up to serve others and not be served, sacrificing when they spit on him, beat him, when they murdered him, and when he laid down his life, the cross reminds us of the sacrifice, and after the resurrection, he said, look at my scars, that's the sacrifice that shows I love you. That's a powerful love. The highest love is a sacrificial love, and it's the love of Jesus, and it's the reason why we don't sit in despair. It's the reason why we don't stay defeated. It's the reason why we don't buy into the narrative of hopelessness. We are not consumed because of the love of Christ today. Lamentations chapter three, in a time where the country was grieving, yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. When I lived in Zimbabwe, new every morning, laid out fresh bread, fresh bakery, fresh mangoes, laid out every day that you could buy in Bulawayo, fresh in the morning, so much more than what fills our stomach, fresh every morning, God's blessings, God's encouragement, God's wisdom, God's faithfulness, God's mercy, every single morning, you receive and get filled up, and then you go live for Christ. That's the calling of God on our lives. We don't just know about these things we experience. These things are real. You don't have to just hear about this from the Bible or a friend. You taste and see how good the Lord truly is. What does the birth and love of Jesus remind us of? Here's 12. Let's say these together as we celebrate together. Number one, God pursues us and wants to be with us. God is real. Jesus humbled himself and became both God and human. God with us is the reassurance and comfort we need. God's love includes sacrifice and is very intentional. God's plan for us includes heaven as our home, but earth is a blessing too. God doesn't give up on us, and it's always good to return to God. To have open minds, hearts, ears, and souls to Jesus. We have a good shepherd in a difficult world. Who to worship and who is trustworthy. God completely knows us and still perfectly loves us. The Savior has come and will return, so love one another. Here's the last truth about Jesus' love being so much greater than any other love. Jesus is coming back as the consummation. 
we fully celebrate the birth of Jesus. It stands, but it doesn't stand alone. It's a bridge. Billy Graham says it this way. When you think about the Savior's birth, the very purpose of Christ coming into the world was that he might offer up his life as a sacrifice for the sins of men. He came to die. This is the heart of Christmas. We can't isolate. We can't divorce. We can't compartmentalize the birth of Jesus and try to sever it from what I'll call the big five. The birth of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, the return of Jesus, and the reign of Jesus. Three have already happened. Three as prophesied in the Bible. Three have already happened. The birth, death, and resurrection have already happened. And we're grateful that we can look back at the historical evidence and see the facts that lead to our faith. But we also look forward with the love of Jesus and that he is going to return every day we're getting closer and he is going to come not only return, but he is going to reign with a new heaven and earth forever. Jesus lives and reigns forever. There's no military nation or politician that can stop that. I'm so grateful I can pick up a Bible, look at the end of the Bible and know how the story finishes. And not only do I read how it finishes, but I rejoice today because it couldn't finish any better. This is our Savior, a plan, a mission, all in, painful, yes, but glorious. When we say the word Advent, it means coming, arrival. And all this time we've been saying Advent. Really, we could say plural, Advents. There are two Advents. The first coming... That's the first advent, and there's a second advent. Jesus is coming back. And right now, we're in between the two advents. We look back and celebrate the Lord and his birth, and we look forward to Jesus' return, his guaranteed return. Because he's faithful, the first advent was wonderful. The second, the best is yet to come, truly. The best is yet to come. So what's the application? John continues in 1 John and says in chapter four, here's our application. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. What does that tell us? God initiates, God loved us before we love God. God loves us more than we love him. And only Christ in his love could atone that's uh, at one mint, that's justification, that's a full forgiveness, that's peace with God. Through his sacrifice, we have the forgiveness of sins. So what are we gonna do? Verse 19, this is what we're gonna do. We love because he first loved us. What are we gonna do in 2024? We will not be consumed by this world because we know Jesus has overcome the world. And because he loves us, we will love each other. We will love each other. That is God's call in 2024. We don't walk around defeated with our head down. We don't buy into that narrative. Our eyes are up to King Jesus. He's on the throne. Doing well today. Doing well and going to return from Bethlehem to beyond this life. I want to give an invitation with two prayers. And the first one, there's probably a lot of people in this room who have never made a decision to follow Jesus. Maybe you've been religious. Maybe you have some family or friends that have made the decision to follow Jesus. Parents, but you never made your own decision. Don't wait any longer. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. You've heard clearly how loved you are. This is a decision between you and God. And it's not earned, it's not achieved, it's received. It's through grace, which means a gift, and you need to receive the gift. What better gift on Christmas to receive than the salvation of your soul? Through Jesus. If you're ready to make that decision, I want to lead you in a prayer right now. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for each one here that is ready now to follow you, Jesus, to say yes to you because you died for our sins and you're risen, and to start a relationship on this wonderful day. God, thank you for each one now that is deciding, turning from death to life, receiving the forgiveness of sins in your family forever. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you made that decision, I'd like you to let me know the prayer team or the connecting center. Let us know. 
And for those of you who are here, a second prayer, who already know Jesus, and what is it on this Christmas? What area do you want to grow in your faith? Can you focus in right now on one area? Maybe God has been speaking to you, and it's one area. It could be water baptism. It could be having a church family, getting into Bible study. It could be serving and using your gifts. Let me make this suggestion. I think a lot of followers of Jesus have been kind of scared and intimidated as there's been turmoil in this world, and people are kind of a little fearful going into this year. What if instead of being silent and retreating, what if the area for you was to really let your light shine and go public with your faith and really live for Jesus and share how he changed your life with people you love, to, to find your voice in a confused world, the good news of the good shepherd? What is your area right now where you really wanna grow this year? That you would look back as we gather next year, Lord willing, you would look back and say, I remember last year and I remember my prayer and look what God has done in this area. Let's lift this up to the Lord right now. Father, we thank you that you are always helping us grow and take a next step forward. And Lord, you know every heart. You know the area that we're thinking about right now. We're lifting it up to you and asking for your help we can't do it alone. We can't do it in our own strengths. We don't have enough wisdom. We don't have enough patience. But you do. I pray, God, that you would download everything we need to walk in this new victory, God, in this new area of growth, and we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.